Imagine you had a branch which was 10 meters long and you can cut this branch up into any set of equal lengths that you want but all the lengths need to add up to 10 so for example we can have two sets of five or five sets of two and what we're going to do is we're going to multiply all of the numbers in that given row together so for example 10 times 1 or 5 times 5 or 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 which is just 2 to the 5 and we'll get a value and we can do this for any length we want given that it's the same length and it equals 10 when we add them all together for what value a do we get the greatest value when we multiply the numbers together to answer this question, we're going to answer a seemingly completely unrelated question first, which is, for what input do we get the greatest output for y equals the nth root of n? The purpose of this video is to try and figure out the maximum for the nth root of n. Before we start, we can get a general idea of what we're looking for by plotting the graph of y equals the nth root of n. We can see there's a maximum quite early on in the graph, and I'm actually going to draw a tangent to this, so we can see roughly where this lies. For now, I'm going to assume that this is actually the maximum of the graph. And although this isn't a conclusive proof, even if we move along the x-axis, we can see that the output for the nth root of n continually decreases. So for now, we're going to assume that this is the maximum, although we'll prove this later. We can try to figure out the x value at this point and we can see it lies somewhere between 0 and 10 and if we zoom in we can actually see this lies somewhere between 2 and 3 hmm I wonder what important value lies between 2 and 3 that we seem to see everywhere anyway with this starting hint we can begin the proof okay we're gonna start this proof by setting y equal to the nth root of n um, we're just going to change this actually to y equals the x root of x, since people are more familiar with x. And here is the first step. We know using power rules that, for example, y equals the square root of x is equal to x to the half. And the reason we know this is that if we have the square root of x times the square root of x, by definition, this is equal to x. And let's just say x to the a times by x to the a equals x. We know that using power rules that we add the powers. So 2a is essentially equal to 1. So a is equal to a half. And we can basically say that x to the half is equal to the square root of x. And this is true for the cube root of x where we can say that this is equal to x to the third. Following on from this, we can say that the xth root of x is equal to x to the 1 over x. So we can continue over here by saying y equals x to the 1 over x. The next step uses a formula you might have seen before. And this formula is a equals e to the ln a and this formula is given in a lot of formula books but if you've not seen this before it is quite intuitive uh, following on from this we can say that a to the b is equal to um, e to the b ln a and in the context of the formula we've already generated over here we can now say that y equals e to the 1 over x ln x. Our next step now is differentiating our function and trying to figure out when the gradient of our function is zero since this will show us where the turning point is. And the next method I want to show you is when we have y equals e to the f of x. The derivative or dy by dx of this is going to be equal to f dash of x multiplied by e to the f of x. So an example would be, let's just say we have um, e to the 2x, let's say. The derivative is going to be 2e to the 2x. 
or if we have e to the x squared, the derivative will be 2x to the e to the x squared. All right, so knowing this, what we can do is we can rewrite this and try and find out our derivative. So we have dy by dx is going to be equal to d dx of 1 over x multiplied by natural log of x. And then this is all multiplied by e to the 1 over x ln x. And this can look very difficult to differentiate, but trust me, it's not too bad. And all we need to do to differentiate this is use the product rule. Unfortunately, I won't be deriving this, but there's a lot of proofs online to see where this comes from. And it's essentially just that if we have the derivative of uv, and uv can be anything, this is going to be equal to u times by dv by dx plus v times by du by dx. And we can use this and now say that let uh, 1 over x equal u and ln x equal v. Since all we're trying to really differentiate is this bit. So now what we can do is we can use this formula and now do d dx of 1 over x ln x is equal to, so 1 over x, and then the derivative of natural log is also 1 over x. And now this can be plus natural log of x multiplied by minus 1 over x squared. We can now clean this up a bit and say that d dx of 1 over x ln x is equal to 1 over x squared multiplied by 1 minus ln x. And now I'm going to resubstitute this into our original equation over here. So we're going to get dy by dx is equal to 1 over x squared of 1 minus ln x multiplied by e to the 1 over x ln x. The aim is to find the turning point, so now I'm just going to make this equal to zero. And when we have a set of numbers multiplied together, the way that we find out when it's equal to zero is when each of those components is equal to zero. So when this is equal to zero, when this is equal to zero, or when this is equal to zero. The issue is, for the first part, x to the minus 2 is never equal to 0 for any real values. And again, over here, e to the 1 over x ln x is also never equal to 0, which means the only component we can really use is this, which is 1 minus ln x. Um, we need to find out when this is equal to 0, since if even one component is 0, the entire thing is 0. So we can now say that, rearranging this, 1 equals ln x. And then we can just say that e to the 1 equals x. And there we have it. We can say that x is equal to e. So the maximum for the x root of x is when x is equal to e. You might be wondering why we've done all of this seemingly random work. We actually never solved the original problem, but it all links together. Let's just say we have the length of 10. We have 10 over 10 copies of this branch, which is just one. When the length is five, we have 10 over five copies, which is two. And when we have a length of two, we have 10 over two copies, which is five. And we can see this is all true. So for a length A, we have 10 over A copies. 
which essentially means we're multiplying a by itself 10 over a times. In other words, it's really just a to 10 over a. And since the branch having a length of 10 meters is purely arbitrary, let's just say the length was actually just one. We can remove the 10. All we're looking to optimize and maximize is this. And we know the solution to this is when a is equal to e. Thank you. For those of you still here, I really appreciate you watching until the end. Rather than working on longer projects like I have been, I presented the method in a different way this time, which is a lot faster and helps me produce these more easily. For longer proofs, I will still animate all of it, but for shorter ones such as this, I might use a whiteboard again. Don't forget to like and subscribe and feel free to ask any questions. Thanks. Thank you.